What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode in my updated easter egg guide series where we combine cheat sheets, shortcuts, and just plain logic to beat every easter egg in COD Zombies. Today, we are covering Dead of the Night. A pretty complex easter egg that you will be able to beat after watching this video. So if you find this helpful, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and with that being said, let's jump straight into the class setup. For your perks, you want to bring Winter's Wail, Victorious Tortoise, Dying Wish, and Stamina. If you're not good at BO4 Zombies, I would suggest running Winter's Whale in your modifier slot, but if you feel confident enough in your abilities not to go down, then run Stamina up in your modifier. However, if you feel like you're good enough to where you don't need to run the typical crutch perks in this game, you can run things like Quick Revive, Time Slip, and even something like Bandolier Bandit. For Elixirs, you want to bring Anywhere But Here, Temporal Gift, Arsenal Accelerator, and finally Stock Option. Stock option is important, we will be using that in the boss fight, so make sure you have it on. If you want to run Mega Elixirs, you can run stuff like In Plain Sight, Alchemical, Free Fire, Perkaholic, and so on. You want to bring Wraith Fires, the Strife, and for your specialist, you either want to bring the Chakrams, the Viper and Dragon, or the Hammer. I personally run the Chakrams, but you probably won't get a level 3 specialist by the time we're in the boss fight, so it doesn't really matter, it's just personal preference. And finally, if you want to bring a talisman, bring one of the ones that make it to where you never lose a certain perk slot when going down. And make sure you put your best perk in that perk slot. One final thing, if you have attachments unlocked for the Spitfire, bring Laser Sight 2, Extended Mags, and Wildfire. If you don't have Wildfire unlocked, don't worry about it because it's not completely necessary. But if you do have it unlocked, be sure to run it because it does help a lot with taking out the boss in this map. Save one zombie on the end of round 1 and turn on the power. At this point, I like to do a very short side quest to give myself a little jump start in the map. So to quickly explain, in the east and west hallways you will see two bookshelves, and you have to look and interact with these symbols in a certain order that you see on the screen right now. Doing this will reveal a secret reward behind the bookshelf. It'll either be a free 500 points, or a weapon like a cordite or something like that. You can do this on round 1, and it only takes like 30 seconds to do. So honestly, I think it's always worth doing. Now you can end the round, and before we start the easter egg, we have to unlock Pack-a-Punch. To do this, you have to find stones in the master bedroom, the wine cellar, and the library. The stones are inside of a vase, so you have to shoot the vase, and the stone will become a soul box. These only need 4 kills to fill up on solo, but the more players you have in your game, the more kills you will need to fill it up, so keep that in mind. When it gives you the option to, gaze into the stone. While gazing, you'll either see a clock, a perk statue, or some sort of painting or item. You can do these in any order, but I typically do them in the order of the clock challenge first, then the item challenge, and finally the perk challenge. While you're unlocking pack a punch, I recommend getting the shield as well. So here's all the locations right now. There's three part locations for three different parts, which means there's nine part locations in total. The shield is always a great thing to have in BO4 Zombies, and especially with Victorious Tortoise. It is a huge crutch on this map. So when you collected all three shield parts, Make your way to the crafting table in the smoking room and craft the shield on this crafting bench. To do the clock challenge, it's pretty easy. You have to find one of three clocks around the map based on your clock that was shown in the stone you gazed in. Right now, I'm showing you all three locations in the corresponding image with them. When you find it, interact with it and it'll spawn a blue circle on the ground. To finish this, you have to stand in the circle until the clock counts all the way up to the number 12 and when it does, the blue circle will disappear. Zombies will spawn during this, so be sure to kill them with your strife, or if you got a weapon from the secret bookshelf easter egg, be sure to use that to take them out. But regardless, when the circle disappears, grab the tuning fork that comes out the clock. Next, we'll cover the items. Now, there's seven different items you could get while gazing in the stone. There's three items and four different images of a woman. So again, right here I'm showing you all the locations with the corresponding image on screen. Find the image you got in your stone and go to that location and you'll see that you can interact with it. When you do, it'll spawn a ghost. Now just follow the ghost wherever she goes and when she's done with her route, she'll destroy something dropping a second tuning fork. And finally, we have the perk statue challenge. This one is the most difficult because it spawns a decent amount of vampires. So again, I sound like a broken record here, but here's all the locations for the perks. It's worth noting that the Danu perk statue will always spawn in the same room every game. When you find the perk statue, go up to it and it'll change your vision. Now just survive the onslaught of vampires while staying in that area, and when you kill the final vampire, he'll drop the third and final tuning fork. When you get all three tuning forks, we can unlock Pack-a-Punch, but 
I wouldn't yet because there's a way that we can kill two birds with one stone if you do something else first. And that something else is crafting the silver bullets. Everyone's favorite task while playing this map. And if you couldn't pick up on the sarcasm, I feel bad for you, but. So there's six parts we need for the silver bullets with three spawn locations each. You need three pieces of silver and three miscellaneous pieces to craft them. Right now I'm showing you all the locations. I know this is a pain to do, and even when knowing all the locations, it's still not fun to do. And to be honest, not even I have it completely memorized, but the Silver Bullets is a very rewarding side quest to do, and plus we do need them for the Easter Egg, so like it or not, if you want to do this Easter Egg, you have to craft the Silver Bullets. When you find all three pieces of silver, come down to the crafting bench in the wine cellar and craft the silver and pick it up. Now you have to find the other three parts. While I'm showing you all the part locations, I'm going to explain what Silver Bullets does. Basically, it's a weapon attachment that gives your weapon more damage, it deals a lot more damage to the mini boss, and it makes it to where you can buy ammo infinitely as long as you have the points to spare. Even for box only weapons. The only exception for this is the Wonder Weapon. You cannot buy infinite ammo for the Alistair's Foley, unfortunately. But with that being said, the Alistair's Foley has so much ammo, each charge shot of it lasts for so long, that it's not really that big of a deal. So here's the location for the sixth and final part for the Silver Bullets, the Poof, that is found in the cemetery. And when you have collected all six pieces, now make your way to the crafting table in the library, and you can finally craft your Silver Bullets. If you have enough points, come up these stairs and buy the Spitfire first, as this will be the weapon we use the most in this game. Now come down and put the Silver Bullets on the Spitfire. I say do it like this because the Silver Bullets is only free for the first purchase. After that, it costs money to put it on your weapons. When you finally have your Silver Bullets, now make your way past the Mozu outside the mansion and interact with this giant Prima Matera, and it'll destroy spawning a werewolf. At this point, Kill the werewolf by shooting the red spot on his chest with your weapon with silver bullets on it and when he dies, he'll drop a part we'll need later on to upgrade the wonder weapon. Now, finally, to start this easter egg, you need to go back and gaze into all three of the stones you previously did to open up Pack-a-Punch, but this time you're not looking for a perk statue or nothing like that. Gazing into these stones will show you an atlas, an effigy, and some knights. These are the three steps you need to do to get to the boss fight. I say it like that, but obviously it's not that simple. It's a Black Ops 4 Easter egg. You can do these challenges in any order, but for this video, I'll show you the order I do them every game. But before we do that, we should get the Wonder Weapon and at least one of the upgrades for it. So to get the Alice's Folly, there's two different ways. One is of course by hitting the mystery box, and the second by doing a pretty short side quest. To get the free wonder weapon, you need to look for four different symbols around the map. The first we'll cover in this video is the red symbol. The first location is near the strife and the stairway to go to the main hall. The second is to the right of the fireplace in the master bedroom. The third is above this painting in the dining hall, and the final location for the red symbol is going to be on this barrel in the wine cellar. When you find a symbol, take a picture of it or write it down like red L or red M or something like that just to remember it. Now we need to find the green symbol and this is near the laboratory area. The first location is outside the map behind this left side gate. The second is inside this building gazebo thing. The third is on the far left of a building to the left of the perk statue. And the fourth is behind the gate to the right of the perk statue. Next is the yellow symbol and these spawn at the forest terrace area. The first location is on the mansion wall by the bowie knife, the second is outside the left gate, the third location is outside the right gate, and the final one is on the mansion wall to the right of the door. And finally, the blue one spawns in the cemetery. The first spawn location is on this tombstone outside the map, the second is on the front of this tomb, the third is at the bottom of this lion statue, and the fourth is behind these tombstones by the steak knife crafting table. When you have all four symbols, come to the library and you'll see a safe containing the wonder weapon. Now put all your symbols in and interact with the top of the safe and if done correctly, the safe will open and you can pick up the wonder weapon. Now there's two upgrades to the wonder weapon. If you did what I said, you should have already gotten the Prima Materia from the werewolf with your silver bullets. So now just come to this corner in the library and show bash this bookshelf. Doing this will reveal the last part for the first Wonder Weapon upgrade. Now go to the laboratory and place your Prima Materia inside this machine and after 20 seconds, it'll pop out on the left side of it and you can pick it back up and now you can go to this crafting table and craft the Chaos Theory. Now with all that done, we can finally start the first challenge of this easter egg, which is going to be the Atlas Challenge. 
So to start, come to the cemetery where the perk statue is and shoot this quail on top of the building with your silver bullets and it'll go down. Now go back to the main hall where you spawn and you'll see three whales reveal themselves. To beat this puzzle, you have to shine all the lights at the same time. Now, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with this, but thankfully there's a strategy to solving this with ease. So starting off, you want to turn the left wheel until the blue light starts shining. Once you do that, then go to the far right wheel and interact with it until the green one is shining. Now come to the center wheel and interact with it until the red light is shining. And then finally, go back to the left one again and interact with it until the blue and the green lights are shining at the same time. If you did it how I told you to, then this should work every single time. And if done correctly, the statue's head will fall down and that's a sign showing that you have completed this step. If for some reason it didn't work, just try again what I said from the very beginning. Now we're on the last annoying step for this easter egg. To beat this step, you have to find three different symbols across the map, and when you find one, there will be scratch marks in potentially three different places. These are scratch marks, but it's a lot easier to remember them as tally marks. Now, just because I said that, there's a chance that one or more locations will not have a scratch mark. So if it doesn't, don't panic or nothing like that. There's just not a location there to worry about. So for example, if you get the symbol that looks like a sword, and one location has three scratch marks, the second location has five scratch marks, and the third location doesn't have anything, then you add three and five to get eight. And so you want to write down in a notepad or something like that, or even in your phones on your notes, you want to write down sword equals eight. And it is important to remember how many tally marks were shown with the corresponding symbol. Because we will have to input these in a certain order later on, and if you mess this step up, you have to do this whole process over again on the next round, with different symbols in different locations. And this step sucks enough as is doing it once, you don't want to do it twice. <laughs> So make sure that you have the right symbol written down and make sure you have the right amount of tally marks that go with it written down as well. When you have the tally marks for all three symbols, you can now make your way to the laboratory and come up to the telescope. Here you'll see a wheel with all types of symbols on them. You need to input your three symbols in the order of the one with the lowest amount of tally marks, all the way up to the one with the highest amount of tally marks. So hold your interact button to move the wheel and knife the wheel to input the symbol at the top. If you did it correctly, you'll get a quote from your character and you can interact with the other wheel. If you didn't, then like I said, unfortunately, you're going to have to look for three more symbols around the map on the next round. When you do it right though, as I said, you can interact with this wheel behind the telescope, hold X or square or whatever your interact button is to turn the wheel until it stops spinning. When it stops spinning, shield bash the wheel to stop it from turning back. Now underneath where you currently are, there is an electric trap. Activate it and run through it with your shield out. This will get electricity on your shield. Now hurry back up the stairs and shield bash the telescope. If you did it correctly, you'll get a white flash, and if you come back down next to where you crafted the Prima Materia, the machine will reveal a stone. Interacting with this will start a lockdown. I will say, you don't have to do this now. You can wait to do all three of these lockdowns right before the boss fight, but I prefer to just get them out of the way as soon as possible. When you're in the lockdown, a bunch of vampires as well as three to four werewolves will spawn. To beat it, you have to kill all four werewolves. The best way to survive in this lockdown is to just hold out in the back of the laboratory and spam charged wonder weapon shots at the ground. And here's a quick tip, the vampires that are killed with a charged shot from your wonder weapon will drop bile. Be sure to pick up the bile as we will need it to upgrade the wonder weapon for a second time fairly shortly. When the werewolves start coming at you, either kill them with your spitfire, with the silver bullets on it, or just spam single shots of your wonder weapon at their chest, and eventually they will die. They're not too hard to kill either way, but when you get a white flash, you can go back to the stone, and it'll give you a max ammo. This means that you are officially done with the atlas stuff. Before we continue on with the easter egg, we should look around the map for at least two, but I would say grab all three fire cores. 
These are for the fire traps. You will need at least two for a certain step later on in the Easter egg, but I would say grab the third one as well because that'll make the next lockdown we do so much easier. So here's all the locations. There are 14 in total, but they're pretty hard to miss. So just go around the map and check all the locations. And if you find one, obviously pick it up. When you find them, you can input them in the fire core traps to activate them, but you want to put them in the master bedroom, the library, and the cemetery. But you don't have to worry about that just now. Just grab the cores for now. Before we can continue with the easter egg, we have to fully upgrade the wonder weapon at this point. It's not hard. We need three parts in total for the second upgrade. The first one, you need to kill three vampires with charged wonder weapon shots and pick up the bile that they drop when they die. When the container in your hut is fully filled, make your way to the cemetery. Here you'll see a coffin with a yellow glow effect on it, and all you have to do is interact with the coffin and a Crimson Nosferatu will come out. Now, these guys can be a pain, but luckily, if you shoot a charged shot of your wonder weapon in front of the coffin, he'll just jump straight into it like a complete moron, and he'll die and you can pick up his Prima Matera. The second part is also here in the cemetery, although I would recommend getting down to the last zombie in the round before doing this step. Come up to these lanterns and you'll see that one is glowing with a more reddish tint than the rest of them. When you find the lantern, shoot it with your wonder weapon, and now another one of these lanterns will light up with the same tint. Shoot it again, and you have to do this a total of four times. When you've shot four lanterns, a vampire will start to spawn above the lantern. If you shoot the cloud of smoke above the lantern before he flies away, again, you can actually kill him before he can even start flying away for this step. And that makes it a lot easier. If you miss that though, you just have to shoot him out the sky with your Alice's Foley, and when you do, go collect the Prima Materia that he drops. It's worth noting that if you fail this step in any way, whether you shoot one of the normally lit lanterns, or if you shoot one that's not the red lantern at all, or even if you miss the vampire, you're either going to have to wait 90 seconds, or you're going to have to wait a few rounds, or in some extremely rare cases, the game is just completely glitched at this point and you cannot proceed with the easter egg. I don't know why this is a thing, and more importantly, I don't know why Treyarch never fixed this, because this has been in the game since launch, but those are your options if you fail this step. So just make sure that you do it correctly on the first time. And for the final wonder weapon part, go to the forest. In this area, there'll be three dig spots that you have to dig up to find the final part. The way you dig them up is you have to shoot a zombie that's standing right on top of one of these dig spots with a charged wonder weapon shot. And, and the effect that you shoot them with has to be the yellow one that brainwashes the zombies. If done correctly, a zombie will dig up the spot and there will be a one out of three chance that the final part will be under there. If it's not, there's two more spots in the forest area that you have to dig up to find the part. I mean, they're pretty hard to miss. They're dig spots with mushrooms sticking out of them. So that shouldn't be too hard to find. But once you grab the third and final part, make your way back to the greenhouse laboratory and place the two Prima Materias in this machine. Now, for some reason, you can only put one at a time. So pick up one and put the other in and then pick that part up. And after 40 seconds of waiting, you can finally come to this crafting table and craft the Alistair's Annihilator. Now the Wonder Weapon is fully upgraded, and with that being said, let's continue on with this easter egg. Now we're on the effigy step. To start, come to the cemetery. Now thankfully these last two stones challenges are nowhere near as difficult and tedious as the first one. They're actually quite fun if I'm being honest, but when you're at the cemetery, while you're walking around, you'll see that five trees will have its leaves fall off of the tree. Now these trees in specific, you have to shoot with your Wonder Weapon until a branch drops to the ground. Pick it up, and you have to do this a total of five times across the map. One location is as soon as you enter the cemetery on the left entrance, and the other four are around the lanterns you need for the Alice's Annihilator. When you collect all five, now we need to find a tombstone specifically with the death year of 1912 on it. If you're on co-op, whoever's playing as a character that's faces on the tombstone with the death year 1912 has to interact with it. But on solo, obviously, you don't have to worry about that. Just find the tombstone with 1912 on it. And when you interact with it, you then need to go back to the branches and shoot a charged wonder weapon shot at the ground in front of the branches. Specifically, you need the fire one, which is only with the Alistair's Annihilator upgrade on it, which is why we needed to fully upgrade the wonder weapon before we could continue. When you get the fire effect in front of the branches, now go up to them and interact with the branches and they'll form the effigy. Now interact with it again before the fire effect disappears, and if done correctly, you should be sucked underground 
with a pretty cool animation playing, and then you'll be released from the effigy and you'll be in afterlife mode, or at least something a lot like it. Now you will need to find a ghost around the map and escort her back to the branches in around 5 minutes. If you can't do it in that time, then the afterlife effect will go away and you'll have to do it again on the next round. The ghost can spawn anywhere in the map, but her most common spawn locations are in the windows of the Danu perk room, in this window in the wine cellar, in the window next to the fireplace in the master bedroom, and behind this table in the dining hall. If you can't find her after checking all of those locations, just check other windows in the map until you do. When you do find her, like I said, escort her back to the effigy and when you do, she'll be engulfed in flames and she'll drop a stone. Now, this is the same thing as before, this is a stone to activate the second lockdown. Before you start it, I'd recommend packing your Spitfire at least one time. When you're ready though, come to this stone and activate it to start the lockdown. Now the best strategy I have for surviving this lockdown is you camp in the perk room with the fire trap on on one side and charge bundle weapon shots on the other. For the 30 seconds while the fire trap is active, this makes you pretty much invincible. When the fire trap turns off, move up a little bit and shoot charge shots where the fire trap was and watch for zombies behind you. At this point, werewolves will start spawning, so just start looping around the cemetery and kill the werewolves with your pack a bunch spitfire, and after you kill three, you'll get a white flash and you'll be done with this step. Make sure you go back to the stone and grab your max ammo. The final step in this easter egg is the night step. To start this, you have to grab gems by shield bashing fireplaces in a certain order. There's three sets you have to do for three different gems. You can do the sets in any order, but the order of the set itself has to be the same as I'm showing you. So get to the end of the round and save one to two zombies and we can start. We're gonna start with the library gem first. To start this, you have to turn on the aforementioned fire traps and shoot them with a double upgraded wonder weapon to turn the flames blue. When they're blue, run through them with your shield out to get flames on your shield. Now you have 45 seconds to melee four fireplaces in this order to turn them blue. The order you have to melee them is the fireplace in the smoking room next to the shield crafting table, the fireplace in the library to the right of the fire trap, and then the one to the left of the fire trap, and then finally make your way back up the stairs and melee the fireplace in the billiards room. If you did it in this order, a gem will stick out of the fireplace and pick up the gem. The second one we can also do from the fire trap in the library. This one consists of fireplaces in the main hall. So. Again, get the blue flames on your shield, and the order of the second set is the fireplace right beside the mozu, then go up the stairs and the second fireplace is by the strife, and then hit the fireplace across the hall from the mozu wall by, and finally go up these stairs and melee the fireplace next to the essex wall by. If done correctly, again, a gem will come out the bottom of the fireplace and make sure you pick it up. The third and final set I like to start from the master bedroom area, but this is doable from the library still, you just have to be on point with your melees and everything like that. So once again, get blue flames on your shield and melee the fireplaces in the order of the one in the trophy room and then the fireplace right next to it in the master bedroom. Then run back through the east hallway and the third one is in the music room. And finally, come down these stairs and make your way into the dining hall and melee the fourth fireplace here next to the mystery box. Collect the gem and now you should have all three. Now we have to take the gems to three knights across the map. There's one by the vapor wall by outside the laboratory, one in the main hall by the entrance to the library, and one on the right side of the cemetery. You can do these in any order, but I like to do them in the order of the labs first, and then the cemetery, and finally the main hall. When you give a knight a gem, it'll destroy the knight and the gem will start to follow you. Now if you run at any point, the gem will stop following you and you'll have to go find it and escort it again. So obviously this means you have to escort it back to the main hall at walking speed. But this isn't too bad since you have one of the best wonder weapons ever with you and you can just shoot charge shots at the ground to protect yourself from any type of enemy. Now escort it back to the main hall and when you have it here, hurry and run away from it to make it stop following you. Now as long as you don't leave it here for like an absurd amount of time, like 20 minutes or something, as far as I know, he'll just sit here and wait, he won't despawn. Now go get the one from the cemetery. Again, escort it at walking pace to the main hall, and when you have both gems in the main hall, now insert the gem into the knight that's right in front of the entrance to the library. And now that all three are following you, you need to escort them to the forest. In this area, there will be three glowing spots on the ground. These indicate where the gems need to go. They're pretty much in a straight line, so when you put one in, just 
Just go horizontally across the forest and you'll find the other two. When all three gems are placed, the knights will appear. At this point, the knights are a soul box. Now you have to kill 10 zombies next to it to fill it up, and once you do, it'll move closer to Pack-a-Punch. Now you have to do it for a second time, but this time, it only takes 6 zombies to fill him up. Once he moves for a second time, he'll go right in front of Pack-a-Punch, and now you have to do this for the other 2 knights. Once you get all three in front of Pack-a-Punch, they will form a triangle and a werewolf will spawn. You need to kill the werewolf while he's inside the triangle and when you do, you'll get a white flash and the stone will be in the center of the triangle. Before you start this final lockdown, be sure to upgrade your Spitfire as much as possible because this is by far the hardest lockdown to complete. When you're ready though, start the lockdown and there'll be a lot, and I mean a lot, of Catalyst zombies that spawn. The strategy I use is I just camp right in front of the Pack-a-Punch machine and I just spam Wonder Weapon shots at the ground. After you kill enough Catalysts, the werewolves will spawn and you just have to kill them with your Spitfire. If you Pack-a-Punch it a couple times like I said, then they should go down in less than a clip. But besides the Catalyst, this lockdown isn't really that different from the other two. So when you kill three werewolves, you'll get a white flash and you interact with the stone to grab a max ammo and now it is time for the boss fight. So at this point get all your perks, fully upgrade your Spitfire if you haven't yet, get the homunculus from the mystery box, get a full shield, get a full specialist, and when you do and you feel ready to enter the boss fight, you can come to this door besides the titan wall by in the forest area, interact with it for about 5 or so seconds and it'll start the boss fight. There's three phases to the boss fight. For the first phase, you'll see a green square somewhere in the boss fight arena. You need to turn the statues to get all three of their lights to be shining at the green square. You'll know if it's angled properly if the light on the bottom of the statue is green instead of white. While you're doing this, you need to pay attention to where the werewolf is. He will be invisible and the only way to know where he is is he will leave a trail of smoke behind where he is charging. If you see this trail of smoke coming for you, Get out of the way as soon as possible, I cannot stress this enough. Because if he hits you with this, he'll do anywhere from 125 damage to a whopping 175 damage. Leaving you one shot to most enemies in the map. And that's obviously not good. So, just try your best to avoid being hit by the werewolf's trail of smoke. But when you get all three lights pointed at the green square, stand in it and shoot a charged wonder weapon shot at the ground, or if you have a homunculus, throw it somewhere in the map. After around 5 or so seconds, the werewolf will charge at you, but since you're in the square, he'll be stunned by it. Now at this point, pull out your Spitfire and spray his chest to damage him as much as possible. If he makes this sound, you have completed phase 1 of this fight. If he just disappears and you hear the statues turn, that means you did not deal enough damage to proceed to the next phase yet, so just do this process again. When you do damage him enough though, hurry up and grab your drops because they do not last long until they're replaced with more drops. Phase 2 you just need to kill a bunch of enemies in the playing area. There'll be zombies, vampires, catalysts, and even a few werewolves. So just like the rest of this easter egg, shoot charge one weapon shots at the ground and you'll be pretty much invincible. During this phase, a Crimson Nosferatu will spawn, and if he gets the chance to, he will grab you, and he will start like playing a biting animation on you. So the best way to avoid this is to just train around the Wonder Weapon effect that you shot at the ground. So just keep doing this, and when a werewolf spawns, spray it with your Spitfire. This is not like a normal boss fight werewolf or nothing like that. These werewolves do not have a lot of health. When no more enemies are spawning, that is your cue that you have completed phase 2. So make sure you go grab your max ammo and your carpenter before they are replaced by more. Now you're in phase 3, and phase 3 is the same as phase 1 except for two things. Number 1, the werewolf has more health, and number 2, you have to turn the statues to find the now invisible green square. Again, just watch out for the werewolf's trail of smoke and don't stand in it. Finding the green square isn't that hard, just keep turning the statues and you'll find it fairly quickly. When you find the green square, again, align all three statues to where their lights are shining at the green square, and now go in the green square and throw a homunculus, or if you don't have any, shoot a charge one weapon shot at the ground and wait for a werewolf to come in the green square. While you're waiting for him, pull out your Spitfire and pop your stock option. For some reason you can't pop it while you're holding the wonder weapon, so do that and when the werewolf comes in the green square, damage him like crazy, spray his red chest with your silver bullet spitfire. If you do it like I told you to, you should be able to one phase him. 
But if not, just do the same thing again. Find the green square, align all the statues, stand in it, protect yourself from the zombies, spray the werewolf. And when you do that, the werewolf will play an animation of him grabbing his chest and collapsing and eventually dying. And when you see that, you have successfully completed the Dead of the Night Easter Egg. So I hope you guys did enjoy this guide. If you did, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, comment down below which map I should make an updated guide for next. I already made quests on Blood of the Dead, Garad Krovi, and Voyage of Despair. So if you guys want to go check those out, click it on the end screen right now. And if you don't feel like watching any more Easter egg guides, may I suggest you a video where I complete every single Easter egg in COD Zombies all in one video. If you want to check that out, again, it's on the end screen right now. Thank you guys so much for watching. And with that being said, this is Joltz, signing out. Peace!